the golden age of comic books month number 18 these are the 33 comic books on the newsstands with a cover date of november 1939 this is the highest number of comics that had ever been on the newsstands at the same time at this point in comic book history showing the definite growth continually at the end of 1939 as the popularity of Superman has made many publishers want to jump in on the superhero bandwagon and more and more new publishers are popping up. And we see that this month for sure. We get Best Comics number one and Blue Ribbon Comics number one from MLJ, which would later change their name to Archie Publications, becoming one of the biggest comic book publishers in all of American comic book publishing history. We also get a double action comics ash can one shot from DC not officially released to the public and an interesting one shot Edison inspiration to youth and this was a comic book version of the life story of Thomas Edison. So let's analyze all the books on the newsstand. Let's look at their rarity on the CGC census and look at their overstreet price guide value. So we have 33 comics this month. That's up from 31 last month. This is the highest ever at this point. And yet some comics are still actually considered quite scarce at this point. If we use the average estimate that the average comic on the newsstands was selling 200,000 copies a month, that means there's 6.6 .6 million comics sold this particular month, which would be a record. Also, keep in mind on this chart for November 1939, we also technically had Marvel Comics number one out from Timely Comics. It was the second printing, and it's believed to have sold 800,000 copies. So, in fact, I did not put it on the chart because it's a second printing, but it is technically considered to be the best-selling comic of this month, being a second printing. Uh, the first printing had come out last month, which we covered all the documentation. The price guide and the CGC census does not really separate um, prices for the two printings. So I chose not to list it here. So you can go look at last month's chart for details on Marvel Comics number one. So what are the big books of this month? Well, Detective Comics number 33 is by far the most important book of the month, the most popular, the most valuable, and appears to be the most common based on the CGC census. It features not only in one of the earliest cover appearances ever of Batman, but it's Batman's first origin story. And this is telling the story of Bruce Wayne's parents being killed. In low grade, this major key book is worth $9,000 in the Overstreet Price Guide and a big $165,000 for a high grade copy. How easy, easy is it to find a high-grade copy? Well, five copies in the world have survived and been graded 9.0 or higher by the CGC census. This includes restored copies, qualified and signed copies. 75 copies in total for all copies graded. After that, the next most common book on the list is Action Comics number 18. Of course, this is a Superman appearance and of course, very popular. And we see $667 for a low-grade copy of that book. The other book that's actually quite valuable this month is Adventure Comics number 44, featuring one of the earliest cover appearances of The Sandman at DC Comics. So this is actually considered to be more valuable than the Superman appearance this month, yet on the CGC census, it's way scarcer. What other books seem to pop up? Wonderland Comics number seven from Fox Comics has a surprisingly high number of copies have been graded, 24 copies on the CGC census, and also a very popular price tag at $541 for a low grade copy. And it reaches $10,000, which is a rare feat for most comics to do, especially ones that are not number one issues. So there we've kind of talked about the most common books on the CGC census. Usually DCs are the most common because they're the most highly collected to the state since DC is still publishing. And they're usually superhero oriented, which of course draw, drives up the business, the demand and the price tag. We find that out of the 33 comics on the list, there are actually four comics on this list that have zero copies graded by the CGC. So let's just look at those for a moment. Double Action Comics Ashcan, The Edison Inspiration to Youth, which is an interesting one shot. But the two that 
are just regular monthly books are Comics on Parade number 20 from United Features with a low price tag of $42 and also Popular Comics number 45 with a low price tag of $38. So these books are scarce but their main reason they have not been graded is because of the low price tag. Retailers just don't find there's any price growth on these books so it does not even pay to pay the, the fees to get these books graded. So keep that in mind when you're comparing the rarity with the price is that usually the higher the price tag the more copies are graded so if you really want to find out if a book truly is rare is to find a book with a high price tag but still a low count on the cgc census do we see this happening at all this month well let's just check the chart here quickly a uh, good example would be All American Comics number 8. This is a, a major key book of the month. It's the first appearance of a new DC superhero. It has a fairly high price tag at $423, but there is only 9 copies graded. And that just shows, again, further proof of the scarcity of a book like that, because the high price tag has simply not brought the copies out. Do we see the opposite happen where a book has a low price tag value but actually has a lot of copies graded? Well, an example of that may be something like Mickey Mouse Magazine. The 50th issue is out this month with the goofy cover. Only five copies graded and a $74 price tag. So it's one of the scarcer books and the price tag's a little bit higher. It's not real expensive. But it gives you an example. So you can really have some fun kind of comparing all these books. Um, just to kind of see if there's any gems in here that seem undervalued in comparison to other books. At this time, most of the comic books were still anthologies, meaning that there was a very varied batch of different strips and genres in a single comic. But there were a few special titles that had a single theme, including four color comics, which each month had a special theme. This month it's Don Winslow of the Navy. We also had large feature comics, this one featuring Dick Tracy this month, and single series number 12 featured Joe Jinx. So those three books would have really stood out on the newsstand. And it's interesting uh, that these publishers were taking these chances. Unfortunately, we don't have sales uh, documentation for any of those three titles to really know if these single theme or single character books were actually selling as good as the anthology books. But of course over time we'd have more and more of them so with the popularity of Superman getting his own title it seemed inevitable that we're going to get more and more of these. Let's look at the actual documented comic book sales figures for this month. We don't have sales figures for all the books unfortunately but we have a pretty good little census here to give us a rough idea. Action Comics, the latest issue, is documented to have been sold at around 625,000 copies. If you, if you subtract that from the total of the DC group of four titles out that month, you'll see that the remaining three DC titles would have sold almost 800,000. So that's less than 300,000 each still at this time. So realistically, Superman was outselling Batman two to one at this point. Once we get past Action Comics, the best-selling comic on the newsstand is Tip Top Comics with a huge 333,000 copies. After that, we've got Famous Funnies, which is close nearby at 310,000 for the classic title that's the longest-running comic book at the time. And Feature Comic was always popular from Quality Comics, also selling 305,000 copies. Everything else on this list has to be divided up, but it would appear that the average book on this list was selling between 180 and about 280,000 copies. So we'll see that with the two titles from Western Comics, the three titles from Fox Comics, and the two comics from Dell Comics.